We're back. We're live. Welcome to Track Girl Summer. I am your host, Natasha Hastings, and this is my co-host, Corey Carter. And we're Track Girl Summer, where we are bringing the culture to track and field. Let me look at the camera and not at the screen. Um, Corey? Track Girl Summer. Track Girl Summer. I apologize for my video quality. I really thought I was charging my battery for my camera. I was not. You look great. You look great. What pisses me off, I like literally like two hours ago, I was like, let me ch check to make sure my camera's charging. And it was on the charger. I don't know what happened. So it's fine. All right. Well, follow me, Natasha Hastings, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I should know this by now. Follow Corey, the Corey Monster, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, no Facebook. Most importantly, follow Facebook. track. I don't know why I use every time. <laughs> I don't even on Facebook, but I'm there. Most importantly, follow Track Girl Summer, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You should be watching this on Track Girl Summer channel. Not my channel, but I mean, if you're there, cool. But come on over to the Track Girl Summer Party. Oh my gosh, we're at 199 subscribers. We're almost at 200, We're guys. almost there. We we oh need to get to 1,000, but baby steps. There's 39 of y'all in here right now. <laughs> 42. Share and like. Bring some folks to the party. We got a fire show coming up tonight. Um, so we're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, maybe a different time, <laughs> but we're here, we're here, and when we're here, we're here, but when we're not here, still, still come here and watch it play back. Absolutely. Come back and watch the playbacks, playbacks. Aisha is gracious enough to, um, hit us with the timestamp so you can just watch the best parts, whatever part you want to watch. But anyway, today we will be joined by the Tiana Bartoletta. We will get into her bio a little bit later. Um, but also we have some announcements. Do you want to tell them or should I tell them? Well, first we, we first want to do a fit, fit check and then we will get into the Exciting oh, news. we're gonna do the fit check first. Okay, okay. Let's let's we let's, always do, the fit check. let's do Corey's fit check. <laughs> this is Corey's Today, segment. Oh, okay. Belly check. Show it off the CPM. You know, we've got like some baggy jeans, but it's really about the shirt. So like, cute. It's called because she makes her own like natural hair oils. In the hair for the length, and we're getting into it. Get into it, get into it, get into it. I'm just gonna give and you the fit say, check. It's huh? a good segue, though. It's a good segue. It's it's a really good segue because let me let me let me build up the drama for y'all. Okay, I'm on my way to class yesterday, and I get a phone call. There's COVID in your son's classroom. You need to come pick him up right now. And we won't be open until September 15th. Let me tell y'all. Today was day one of quarantine. And I don't know how I'm going to make it to September 15th. <laughs> so today's fit check is <laughs> Track Girl Summer's trucker hat. But the big news is. That was my drum roll. Our merchandise is now available on trackgirlsummer.com. So the link is in the description. You can go get you a hat or a t-shirt. Or both. Or both. <laughs> get you one for your auntie. Get you one for your uncle. They're unisex. Hey, there's something there for everybody. The merch is here. The merch is here. Um, All right. <laughs> my best friends, my best friends in the chat, guys. Um, Aisha's no is she? Head. Is she? Wait, wait. But she doesn't like my shirt. Who doesn't like your shirt? She says we're best friends. 
Yeah, Aisha did call you out. Bet check, bit check <laughs> is part of the show. Um, even if you don't bring a fit. Listen, <laughs> all right, fine. It's a black t-shirt and some camo shorts, okay? Well, I like the camo shorts. Men's shorts at that, all right? It was that kind of day, all right? Okay, she's like, for war. <laughs> Listen. <Yeah. laughs> Bye. Get the merch and, you know, do it for your, do it like it's your B-Day. Do it like it's your B-Day. Baby. Uh, it only took us like six months to get you guys merch, so. Hey, all that matters is that we're here. There's also all of our information, Twitter, Instagram, all of these videos also live on Track Girl Summer. So whatever you need to know about Track Girl Summer, head to trackgirlsummer.com. All right, let's, let's get into the, the real party. Um, let me pull up. Where did I put this? Corey. Let me pull, let me I'm, pull this I'm usually the one scrambling, okay? I told you, I don't know where my iPad is. I told you that I thought my camera was charged. I told you, I've been doing a lot of things. But what I did do today is get that website up and running. So, like, give me a little grace. We have an Olympic gold medalist in the building. Okay. She's a 2016. And in the 4 by one Okay. She said, it's called track and field. The rest of you girls are lazy. Pick <laughs> track or field. Um, 2012 in London, she got gold on the 4 by one team. For, and we're at Worlds in 2015 in Beijing. She got a gold in the long jump. 2005, she got a gold in the long jump in Helsinki. 2017, she's got a bronze in the long jump. She's she's been getting medals from 20, 2005 to 2017, which is insane to me. World indoors, she's got she's got a gold from Moscow in 2006. 2014, she got a bronze in the 60. In 2012, she got a bronze in the 60. Um, so without further ado, without further ado, oh, I thought you were going to say her name. Do you know who it is? Oh, wait. And you look on. so good right now. She looks amazing. Thank you. I put in like, some effort. <laughs> a lot more effort than me. I was gonna say, I was like, is that is that shame? Hold on, did we miss something? Is it your birthday? My birthday was two birthday days ago. Was... Happy birthday. All right, wait, what, what sign Thank does that you. make you? Are you I'm 36? She's hey, a Virgo. Hey. You're a Virgo? That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Can I just say, we have never had this many people in our chat <laughs> so early what? into our live stream. The people are here for TB, okay? Oh, <laughs> Thank you so for joining good. us, all right? <laughs> They've been asking. So we've got a Gemini, a Leo, and a Virgo. I like this. These are all very big personalities. Very big personalities. Yeah, you look good <laughs> with a capital U. She came on the camera, and that was the first thing I said. Like, ooh, slay. Slay. Black. I love it. I spent a lot of money on Ma at Mac uh, recently. <laughs> You're a Mac girl? Yeah, and I, I literally walked in, and I said, um, I need to level up my Zoom look. <laughs> and they and the woman uh at the counter was like, I got you. And so we just we just gave me whatever I needed to look good on camera. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm with it. Two laps for that Mac because she's doing her job. You look <laughs> absolutely granted, she had a great canvas to work exactly. with. Exactly. Exactly. But you're giving me like Cinderella brandy, like I don't, with the brick. Yeah, like, 
<laughs> impossible. Uh, I can't see. Uh, that's all you're gonna get me tonight. Uh, but like, let's get into Tiana. So let's get into the Tiana. things. First of all, I was reading your book because you know she is an author. Um, Link in the description. And, yes, go buy it. Um, if you you know worry about COVID, don't want to um, go to Barnes and Noble, want to get it tonight, download it on the Kindle from Amazon, like I did. Um, but what was funny to me is that you almost wasn't even a track athlete. You were trying to go out for the wrestling team. You were watching gymnastics, not track, in the 96 Olympics. And it's funny to me because we were talking on our last live about how I have this theory that a lot of the pro elite athletes did not start track until later in life. And you didn't start until middle school, right? Right. So tell me about your, your start and how you fell in love with long jumping, sprinting. Yeah, so I really did try to wrestle. And it's because I'm a daddy's girl. My dad wrestled, he fought, and he's a martial artist, a boxer, and he was one of the wrestling coaches. Mm. So to me, it was just like, I'm going to do what my daddy does. And my dad was one of those fathers that made me feel like I could do anything. So I didn't see a problem. And so when I came home with the little, you know how I used to get those interest flyers from school? <laughs> and it's like, bring your parents to this interest meeting after school or whatever. I came home with the wrestling one thinking this is a no brainer. And my mom was like, um, no. And me and my dad both were shocked at this. And so that's why I had to go to track practice instead. And I didn't love it. It wasn't love at first sight. I didn't like it. I didn't like who runs for fun is where I was at. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I chose the long jump because I was like, that looked the most fun out of all of the things that were available to us. And the love developed over time. Okay. She said, you gotta, I, see, I fell in love immediately, but that's just me. Also, pro tip, I tried out for the flag football team, and dad had already like, told me I couldn't play tackle. So I just did, I forged the permission slip and just, <laughs> and by the time they found out I was on the team, I was captain, so they couldn't do nothing about it. But <laughs> cool. I, see, like, I forged the permission slip before, but it was to go to NASA. <laughs> he said, I was trying to go to space. <laughs> yeah. I like but it. Like, I like it. Don't forge signatures. That's illegal. Um, also, shout out to TC Bell for t purchasing a t shirt. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> glad your mom stepped in and intervened because clearly um, the track is where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So I remember <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this cuz uh I had like the the run back in my mind when um Corey mentioned the 2005 stat cuz I'm like a lot of people don't remember or know like Tiana you're one of the people where it's like put some respect on this girl's name so 2005 you were a junior at Tennessee you were 19 or Sophomore at Tennessee. Okay. I had the pleasure of thank well pleasure of watching you in the SEC. I didn't have to compete against you. <laughs> but <laughs> you were a sophomore at the World Championships in Helsinki in the pouring rain. Okay. And like the poise to go there and win gold as a sophomore in college. I keep sophomore in college. Um, mm -hmm. but then, and, and we all remember you on the four by one and on the hundred and the 60, but then I want you to talk a little bit about, cause I love how number one, how vulnerable you, you are. Um, because I think a lot of people, we see the tough athlete, we see the gold performances, we see, you know, the glitz and glam, but I do appreciate how 
vulnerable you allow yourself to be on social media because I don't think we get enough of that from our yeah. superheroes, right? Um, but there's the 2005 that I feel like sometimes get lost because like like me, <laughs> we had some time where it was like, like I remember in 2016, it was like, this was my gold medal because it was such a long journey from 2005 being that sophomore in college, bright future ahead of you to achieve that. And then we'll go ahead and call them failures or bumps in the road along the way, but to still hold on to that determination and focus to get to 2016 and beyond and the world record on the four by I'm, I'm throwing so much at you, but just tell us about it all. <laughs> Because it's, it's it's a long journey that I'm like, I feel like a lot of times the re- you don't get the respect that you deserve because you've been in the game for so long and you've overcome so much personally and on the field and track. <sighs> Take it away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it really, really, <laughs> it's really a matter of like, we don't, we don't like really respect I won't say respect but we the glamour of a long grind is not what most people want to see right they want to see that person that came in hot who just got all the medals and so yeah I to win as a sophomore was incredible I believed at that point in time I was just a jumper uh I did everything my coaches told me to do um everything wasn't perfect. Like my diet wasn't perfect or anything like that. But I did have was mental toughness and being from Ohio used to competing in inclement weather gave me the edge because I didn't know any better. Like all the other pros were like, this is not what a world championship is supposed to be like in August. They all had these, these past experiences and these expectations, you know, Mm. and, I didn't. I just went in like, huh, this is what it is. Uh, the other thing, the other thing that happened was my coach said I wasn't going to win. And she meant well. She wanted to temper my expectations. She wanted to alleviate some of the pressure. Um, but can we, it can me we off. say who your coach is or was at that time? Because I know people oh, are going to be like, who is she talking about? Yeah. At the time, it was Carol Smith Gilbert <laughs> at the University of Tennessee. And she meant well, but <laughs> they pissed uh, you exactly off, that. rightfully yeah. so. I say, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sitting here putting words in your mouth. I'm sorry, tell your story. It, was, it, did. it did. It, it made me mad, and I like carried that chip on my shoulder into the competition. But also, I knew I couldn't win any money because I was still in college, and so I kind of went in with this attitude like. If I can't win the money, nobody's winning the money. I'm going to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> and so that, that really, uh, I call it hate fire, really uh, gave me that focus. But then, like, I came back in 2006 and got a silver medal, what was a silver medal at the time, but was later upgraded to gold because the winner got uh, busted for PEDs. Uh, after that, seven years of just mediocrity just seven years of struggling and not being able to get it together and so much had to so much happened it's just like so much life was happening during that time and I can't separate the life from the track like Mm -hmm. those two things I bring all of my humanity with me to the track which is why it's so easy to talk about that as all one thing Mm. and um it started to come together uh, in 2012. And it was interesting because people were like, it happened overnight, but those seven years of, of trash mattered. Like they really helped color who I became later. So it's the, it's the whole career, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember actually having some conversations with some people um, about you in 2012, where it was like, Oh, but she just came out of nowhere. I was like, excuse you? You don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> go go look 2005. But again, and I don't want to say again, because it's like, this is the thing that we talk about, like really having true fans of the sport and people educating themselves about athletes. And I'm like, nah, I've been watching Tiana jump out of the pit since my college days. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, she had some time, but 
she's talented and been here for a while. And I think it truly does speak to your mental toughness, as you said. Um, Corey, I know we, we have a script, but there's comments in the, the so if you yeah, want to ask, ask your question. No, it's fine. Woo. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> what I was going to say is you said that you bring your all of you humanity onto the track. And I think as athletes, like I call myself the queen of compartmentalization, like you will never know what's going on with me. And I think athletes are expected to do that. And I think, I think it's so imperative that people understand that we are human because I think about, you know, the past few years, the past couple of years with, with COVID and like people getting depressed and having a hard time, like going to work. And it's like, we have to, but I feel like people expect athletes to be superheroes and, you know, perform on it, on it, on notice. Like we saw that with Simone, we saw that with Naomi, just the, both Simone's actually, um, having to put their mental health, um, before performance. And I think as athletes, we are expected to always put the goal of above our health, our sanity, our peace. Um, and, and on top of that, we have to perform our job in front of everyone people yeah in a high pressure situation where if you if you stumble and it's not even like oh if you fail because i don't like calling it failure but it's like if you aren't the best in the world at what you do all of a sudden you're getting reductions and you know or people are saying oh you choked and it's like <laughs> even if you choke at the at world championships you're still Top one percent in the world of what you do. You know, what I'm saying? saying I choked from your couch. And so I think. <laughs> tell me, tell me how you choked on that couch? Did you choke on them? <laughs> on on them chips, y'all were saying. Um, I'm saying. I, I think that that's so that is so real because I think people look at us as just kind of like the product. Like y'all just go out here, do your job as if like life doesn't happen and you said it you said in seven years so much life happened um which i feel like your book survive in advance by the book if y'all haven't bought the book <laughs> link in bio that, not link in bio that's instagram link in the description <laughs> because I, I feel like i i feel like it's been a while since i said this and i apologize send a black woman some money today and i normally don't tell y'all which <laughs> black woman to do it to but today's black woman to send money to is Tiana Barletta. She also has merch on her website. <laughs> Don't worry, Tiana. It's fine. We shamelessly plug. It's fine. Um, All day, every day. And we support track business over here. Um, but in your book, you say you're either running from something or running towards something. Either way you're running. It's just best, you know, which it is, which I think is very... Um, like that's like a very what's the word I'm looking for like a deep quote and it's very real and, I, and I'm like it resonates with me um and and you talk about being a survivor what does being a survivor like mean to you what do you mean when you say that oh uh, it just means that you aren't immune from adversity but you figure it out mm -hmm. you figure out how to keep bouncing back and it doesn't mean that you're not maybe not slightly diminished, damaged, or even broken in ways, but you're still standing at, and you're still trying to figure out how to get to the next thing. I think uh, it doesn't have to be glamorous. It's like sometimes it's like, oh, I just I made it to the next day and you survived the day before. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's as miraculous as making a team no one thought you could make because you overcame a lot of stuff. Um, it could be almost anything, but at its most fundamental level, it means you stared something you didn't think you could overcome in the face and overcame it. Yeah, I feel that. I feel like I'm like weak because Coe's behind me like snoring. Um, this old man of mine. <laughs> and I, oh. go ahead. Go sorry, ahead. you can go. No, 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 go Thank ahead. Thank you. Does that one have a question? <laughs> yeah, um, I want to talk about your life off the track, but I feel like we skipped because I'm like, 
people need to put respect on your name. And <laughs> I feel like we don't talk about, you're like, I don't want to say a female Carlos because I hate doing that, but like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like another woman that does the long jump and the hundred the way you do it. It just she's she's Tiana Bartoletta. Heike you know what Jackson. I'm saying? Heike and, Jackson did it. Okay. Yes. 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 And I, the Yo amount Jesus of speed you bring <laughs> forward. Um, how did you just like? How did you decide? Okay, I'm doing both. Like I'm not because I feel like especially once we get to the elite level we're told like okay you need to specialize like this is your event and this is what you do and i think the fact that you're able to do two things at the level that you do it so well like how did you decide all right track and field both of it the truth is i'm not actually a very good jumper <laughs> like i get that. away with a lot of shit because i am fast <laughs> And so the two absolutely have to go together, right? Because my speed on the runway is what sets up the entire trajectory of the jump after. And so mm -hmm. since I had to train the speed anyway, it's like, why not run the 100? I'm training for it already. Uh, further, Jesse Owens is my personal hero. We're both from Ohio. <laughs> We both got, we were both tied for the same number of state records. Like this man was like everything that I was trying to Hold on, to Tiana. Hold, hold on real quick. Hold on. Wrong, wrong one. Oh, wrong one. Okay. Continue. Sorry. Also, I Ohio really got some beast coming out of that state. Yeah. We do, because we do half of our outdoor track season under snow, so we're really tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, everything, he is, he really was what I tried to model, like, the career after. And did I expect to run 10-7 while pursuing both? Absolutely not. But this is this is the function of just doing the work and showing up and doing constant effort like what's meant for you is is going to be for you and it just just kind of happened that way but that's why i chose both they are both intricately tied together for me as an athlete so you started that off with i'm not really a good jumper and i rolled my eyes and low-key got mad <laughs> But then also knowing you and listening to you in your description just now is why you're an amazing jumper is because of like just being a student of the sport, but your attention to detail, like, I, I mean, we see it in social media from the meal plans, the meal I preps, every single one of them have the okay. training, <laughs> the weightlifting, the dancing in the gym, like bringing the humanity to it, bringing the fun to it. I think you and I have had conversations before about like losing the joy in what we're doing and, and finding a way to bring the joy back into it. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause I like how, you know, we say here that, you know, we're fans of the athletes, but more than anything, we're fans of the people. Right. And so to kind of hear what makes you tick and what makes you such a great athlete it's it's kind of crazy because i'm i'm i really rolled my eyes like this chick just mm -hmm. not a, okay olympic this gold gold medalist, medalist. <laughs> listen listen my approach was to absolutely hone in on my strengths and yeah. like try to eradicate my weaknesses as much as possible without spending so much time on my weaknesses that my strengths kind of, you know, went away. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that speed really is my advantage. And we spent a lot of time trying to get me to slow that rotation down using proper technique, but I didn't always get it. I mean, I got it the day that I won the gold medal, but I don't always get it. And so that's why, that's why I said, I'm not, I'm not a very good technical jumper. But I think that's so real what you just said, because I think a lot of coaches will watch this athlete and you need to have technique just like her. And they try to put athletes in a box, but you really got to work with what you, you got. And sometimes it's like, hey, 
this might be the proper technique, but but how my brain works, how my body works, how my body is set up, I might have to do things a little bit different. And it and it, I feel like you may not have the best technique if you're looking at your typical jumper, but you have the best technique for you, and that's what really matters. Yep, absolutely. All right, so we're gonna take it on over to the track because ten seven. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say the best lead off leg <laughs> yeah, that ever. I it's mean, a member of it's the energy before the one. When I look at your eyes, <laughs> Tiana like, is there to kill. Okay, Tiana is there I'm to kill. Team, if I'm on your team, I'm like, yo, she about to set us off. And if I'm racing you, I'm like, yo, this girl's a play. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I'm so I am so angry by the time I get to my blocks at the start of the relay for no reason other than No, we like it. It's a reason. No, you about to kill. I made, I, up, never beach, I made up in my head to too. give me it. Huh? I run off a of break too. Like I love it. Yeah. I feel like I, I I it was either an interview of yours, but like you said that you listen to music that like gets you mad before races. Like mm -hmm. and I'm just like, mm -hmm. you want to be mad. Yeah. Like what's that? What's that playlist? Like, so it's, it's highly explicit. I am <laughs> yeah. like, we are, we are selling drugs and murdering people yeah. and yeah. all kinds of stuff. A life that I have not lived <laughs> and not ever lived. No, nothing about that life. <laughs> I'm not really about but that. But when life. you out on the track, you bought that life. But <laughs> on the track, it's like Meek Mill is the only person who gets me. <laughs> when when it's time to sprint, it's like that's that's where I go. And it just taps it just taps into really honestly something primal in me. Like the we talked about being a survivor. It really like I reach really down deep into that well of just shit that I've been through and the the rap music and sometimes um, rock, honestly, if they got something to say and I can feel it, I'm listening to it. It just unleashes that for me. And I go and I like work it out on the track. Can I ask a quick question? Do you take that same approach to long jump? Like, because I feel like sprints, it happens and it's over and it's okay to like be in that rage. C can you maintain that so sort of energy throughout a whole long jump competition? Or are you more of like in a zen, relaxed mode when you long jump? I am um, absolutely not that turned up for the long jump, but I'm also not that calm either. The long jump, I go into what I call sniper mode. Like I'm calm but I will kill you <laughs> like very controlled because the approach is not zero to 100. It's not bad out of hell. It's very controlled. There's a certain rhythm to it and I have to not really be in my emotions. I have to really be in my lane to make sure that I hit that 25 centimeter board at nearly 10 meters per second to get the best jump that I can. Attention to detail, attention to detail. So that makes me... Bring it to the hot question because Corey and I are split and who oh, yeah. better than to oh. ask the Olympic gold medalist in the long jump, oh, how do you feel about the sudden death? The final three? You've been on the circuit for how many years? What? You've been on the circuit for how many years? 16. Okay. It's 16 trash. years doing this. <laughs> what do we feel about the long... What did you say? It's trash. Thank you. <laughs> sit sit down. Thank you. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Great trash. Why is it trash? Well, that's not how the long jump works. I mean, the farthest jump wins. And in the final three, the farthest jump does not win. Um, the farthest of the last round wins. Um that's cute enough. You want that little $10,000 check from the Diamond League, but you're not going home with any medals 
from World Championships or the Olympic Games. And since the Diamond League is what we use to prepare for those championships, it makes no sense to have to to employ an entirely different strategy to make a living all year long only to not be able to do the same thing at the championships. It is literally setting jumpers up for failures, especially the females, because you only get four Diamond League meet opportunities as it is. And it's just really stupid. Mm. Okay, so what if the sudden death was taken to the Olympics and the World Championships? I would, I'm happy that I don't have to worry about that because it's still going to be trash. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for breaking it down so it can forever be broke. Um, <laughs> I feel vindicated. I feel seen right now. <laughs> you feel validated. I just feel like I knew it was right. But Tiana... Just, you know, I just feel like it. I get it, but I still feel like I get one shot and but my, no my semi 400 <laughs> was faster than my final in Rio, but I don't get to go home with a medal. So, well, but what, the I arguments that the arguments to- that you made that like, you know, it's not it. That's not how it works at the world championships and the Olympics. Fair, but yeah, I just feel like you know my my semi and my prelim don't count for the final. So, but so listen, they, neither, they, 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 changed the, they changed the they changed the rule in order to put a spotlight on field events because we don't really get a spotlight, right? And they said that that which I think is BS. Like, I don't agree with that, yeah, but they said that was the rationale. And then one of the people at World Athletics asked me, they came to me and asked me what I thought about the rule. And I said, it's trash. I said, what you could do is the same thing and then give the the farthest jumper of the last round a clutch check, pay him a little bonus for being the person who could jump the farthest in the last round, but don't mess with people's checks don't mess with the best jumper out there's check or points or any of that for a spectacle for tv walk out there with a big ass check that says clutch jumper with like a thousand dollar bonus and and call it good like why why do we have to mess up the whole results for this spectacle someone said so you put a spotlight on the person who didn't jump or throw the farthest lol yeah okay that's what Think I just want ballers to win. Y'all know that I just want whoever is balling to get their get their bag. Someone and said, who's balling is Track Girl Summer. One hundred and seventeen folks in the room. <laughs> I'm hot. I'm hot. <laughs> we hot. <laughs> Keep sharing and liking. Bring some more folks to the party. <laughs> I, I got one person in the chat on my side. <laughs> I think I think sudden death is I think there are certain situations like exhibitions and street street meets where sudden death would be cool. I would love to be in a competition where if you have the shortest jump of that round, you got to sit down and let it just be the last person standing. But Ooh. when you start messing with like the things we depend on to prepare for championships and Olympic games, then that's when I'm like Please don't. You can create other... Like, I would love to see that in an American Track League event. I would love that. Because Paul does such a good job of making sure there's enough opportunities. That's where you do those kind of things. You don't do it when you only have four opportunities to get right before a championship. In this, like, um, last man standing situation, now I'm obsessed with it. Um, (laughs) If you foul, do you just, like, automatically go? I think so. Okay, I love it. I see it. I want this to happen. This is living in my heart. I'm not. I'm not a resistant to change, Natasha. I'm you are to resistant change. to change because I'm I just keep going back to you know we only have four opportunities, and it's like I do wholeheartedly get that 
there are only four Diamond League events for female long jumpers. But then I go back to, again, like, I only have one round at every Diamond League event, and then I get to the World Championships, and I have to run three rounds. Back in the day, it was four rounds. So there is still a level of, like, what we do leading up to isn't necessarily what we actually do there. Um, so I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. Well, I still don't. But, yeah, but I feel like you are saying that, like, you guys have the exact same. I think like, an example is more like, like, you know, like, like what you said, like, you get to 300 and if you're not top three, they're going to snatch your ass off the track is more what it's like for a long jumper than a round, yeah. than a whole round, not counting. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I guess I, I, I just still see it as you get four attempts, you get six attempts. The best one counts. I just get one shot, <laughs> uh, but I'm not out there jumping, so I don't, I don't, I don't know that perspective. My perspective is just, I just get one time around the track, and what I do around the track that one time is what it is. What I do in the final is what it is. I don't get to to have a best out of. For a long jumper, the six rounds is the equivalent of one time around the track. All right. (laughs) That, That since. Since I don't know for how long, how many decades, maybe even a century it's been, you get six jumps. All right. And, and when when the world when I'm the world just, saying, knows, when just because I knows, I'm gonna listen. But that's just me. I just like to listen Just to because it's know. been away for however many centuries <laughs> doesn't mean that it's right, you know? Once upon a time <laughs> Women couldn't go out and get a bank account on their own without their husband. Didn't make it right. But, you know, apples to oranges. But I'm just saying, I like being the devil's advocate. I like being, you know, solo out here. It's okay. I'm just. (laughs) Is we want to offer different ways to spice up the long jump in ways that weren't stupid. Okay. We're not saying don't change that stuff. Just, Just don't do it in ways. Anyways, <laughs> I would like to talk about you. You are a writer. You have a book, but you also have a blog where you touch on a lot of, you know, deep topics, controversial topics. And, I, and what I love is like, you're not afraid to be honest and open, even if it opens you up to criticism. And sometimes it has internet's trash. Eight. Um, but like, why do you write? Why? And like, why do you write? And like, how do you deal with sometimes people being like, yeah, she always over here. Because I don't think you're hating. I think you're just being honest. Honest. Sometimes we don't. And I think before you answer that, because I want to throw something in there. I feel like there is no one on the track that I have seen that's more accountable than you. And I say that like you're accountable and honest. Like I remember at the World Relays, I have a lot of memories. I'm not mm-hmm. obsessed with you. I just, I love you. <laughs> But I remember at World Relays, I can't remember what year it was that um, you fell. And we were like, oh, crap, Tiana, she was just running too fast. And you came off the track and we were like, what happened? And there were no excuses. There were no, you was just like, I just fell. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I fell. Like, But that's that's one of the things that I absolutely love about you is that you're a tell it like it is, even if it's tough for yourself to digest. Um, and you just... you. You're accountable and you're honest. So go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, Corey, it's not true that I'm not afraid. I'm actually almost always afraid when I'm about to weigh in on something that I know is going to be risky or controversial. Um, and that then Natasha, I absolutely, huh? That just makes you brave. Yeah. Because you're overcoming your fear. Yeah. And then Natasha, I truly believe that um, I did. I did just fall because it happened. It happened too fast. But then the you were running too uh, fast because you too yeah, fast. it happened too fast. <laughs> then the next day, I had this big bruise in my gut, and the video showed I was hit by Brazil. But I wasn't gonna make that up in the in the moment because I actually didn't know what happened. But yes, yeah, she laid me out, and I just I walked to the back like <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've always been a writer. I've been a writer longer than I was an athlete. It's always felt like something I needed to do. 
I get really fidgety and anxious when I'm not writing. And I think it's just it's just another outlet for me just to express myself because I am an introvert. Um, a lot of people find that hard to believe. I don't. And I have, I have a hard time um, expressing myself verbally on the spot. Like I'm really awkward um, when I'm not prepared or when I'm thrown into a conversation where I need to express myself. Um, Do you feel like awkwardness, Corey? Because I feel like she's very eloquent. Okay. And, but we don't feel that. Well, I feel it. But if you have me like write first, um, then I am very clear and artful and to the point with, with my words. So it's just a more natural extension of my expression. I think that that definitely speaks to probably why you're such a joy to follow on social media and to follow your blogs. And um, we're not going to call no names because we can get a little controversial and we do get a little bit shady here. But Corey and I have spent an extensive amount of time talking about our whereabouts system. And there there have been some comments in the chat that they want your you to speak on something. And if you choose to speak on it, that's on you. You're, or I shouldn't say that's on you. You're welcome to, but, um, you know, no pressure at all, but Corey and I have, and Corey, don't let me speak for you. Correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Um, we've kind of spoken to, um, kind of the responsibility that we think that we have as professional athletes and as ambassadors of clean sport. Um, and you've been vocal about, you know, what you think about that. And so if you could kind of, you know, I think, I don't want to say give more color, but I do think I've read your blogs and I understand very clearly what you mean and what you said. And I think sometimes people like to take your words and twist them or they see what they want to see or read in what you're saying, which I think is beyond me because I think you're very clear in your standpoint and in not throwing anyone under the bus and, and believing in what you believe in and also believing in clean sport. If you could talk a little bit about that, um, you know, again, what you're comfortable with, but. Yeah. And I would just like to say, I feel like it's easy for people. Like I think people have one perspective when they're looking from the outside in. And so you think things go a certain way. And when, when you're over here, like, actually, this is how it actually breaks down. Sometimes people don't pick it, pick that up and catch it, you know? Yeah. Which is why I think we yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do believe in clean sport. I believe that if you have to cheat to win, you're obviously not a cheater. But that's not usually what I, I weigh in on because that's that's obvious. I feel like that's obvious to most of us. Mm -hmm. um, what I weigh in on is the very preventable like whereabouts situation. Um, is it annoying? Yes. Is it like sometimes an inconvenience? Absolutely. Um, but also it's like the one mandatory thing that allows me to like play in sand for a living and travel the world and like live in South Africa and the Netherlands. So it's like, damn, if I got to pull out my phone and, and text USADA my new address, then I guess I have to do it. And so that post was more like, I was just, as a fan of the sport and really wanting to see that showdown uh, coming up at the Olympic Games, I was disappointed that something that all of us have to do is so easily fumbled by so many of us, mm -hmm. like it all, across the board, so many of us. And it was just like going into an Olympic year, like let this be a reminder to not play, play yourself that way, yeah. especially especially if you're a clean athlete, like, just don't do that. Like there's enough people out here cheating us out of great performances and showdowns. Like don't do these people any favors by not taking care of this kind of business. And I just, yeah. I just think we need to be more mindful of that. Like there's only 
so many things that we absolutely have to do to live this life that we live. So like, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I ran my mouth. Go ahead, Corey. You speak on it. No, I, I just wanted to say, I think you're definitely saying that with love is what I'm getting and that you are definitely someone who has been on the circuit for a minute now. And so you can come to someone as someone who's done it and like as a mentor and be like, look, like it's real out here. Like this, this is something not to play with. Um, and I think, I think you're definitely saying it because you want younger athletes to like have all the opportunities that they can, because you, this life is not guaranteed. You can, it can be gone in one, one hamstring pool and like you have to take advantage of the opportunities you have when you have them. Um, so, I think what I love I, the I, most about what, what and how you say, how you wrote the blog and how you address the situation overall, I'm going to mess this up, but I hope everyone catches my drift. Um, is that you, you say it with compassion, right? And I think a lot of times, and I, I want to say in our community and a lot in this generation, um, when we hold each other accountable, it's, you're hating. And it's like, no, actually, I see so much more in you. I see so much better that I'm actually just holding you accountable and want you to be accountable. I wanted to see that matchup. I want, I want to see, I believe that you're clean. I don't believe any of these things. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I just want you to do better. So the rest of the world can see what I believe in you, what I see in you. And Corey and I (laughs) over the summer were up till two, 3 AM. It was a learning experience for us to like actually read up on the rules to kind of, sit back and really sit with well, why do these rules even exist? You know, if we believe in clean sport, like, yeah, it's a burden. It sucks. But is it that difficult or is it that much to ask for to, as you said, play in the sand, travel the world, run 49 seconds, run 52 and seconds, run 10 seconds, run nine seconds. You know, like, is it that much? Is it too much to ask? Gold medal. And to ensure that when you are going out and competing, you get your gold medal that day, not years later when they found out the person who they gave your gold medal to was dirty. Like, there's a reason why we do it. It's not just to be inconvenient and to give you access to our sport. It's also to make sure that we have a a clean playing field. Um, So you you speak facts. Here's the thing. No one can get mad at you if you speak in facts. Well, they mad, honey, but... Well, we I ain't mean, mad. They, they mad. <laughs> they're mad. And um, there's a lot of people that believe I had some kind of obligation to just speak to him directly. But the, the truth is, like, I was speaking to all of us because we all, he wasn't the only one, and I mentioned that in the blog, that had these whereabout issues at the time that mm-hmm. I wrote the blog. And so... I mean, I've, I've been taking a lot of darts, <laughs> darts on that. And people are still mad at me about that and are accusing me of attacking one of my own and bringing down and piling on um, a black man when he was already down. But that was, I respect their opinions and their positions, but I can only say so many times that's not what my motivation was. Right. And I, I, yeah. I'll take the darts. I'll go ahead and say this because again, Corey and I, did hella research dug into things and Corey tell remind me again there's 2200 over 2200 athletes in the uh the registered testing pool of that 22 or I think it's 2600 anyway over 2000 athletes in the registered testing pool of that 2200 athletes there are 10 people currently serving a ban for whereabouts failures. 10. It's less than one. Three of which are Americans. And I think what gets lost and what always happens is when it's a big name, that's when it gets a lot of attention. And so it turns into, oh, it's an issue with the system. And it's like, no, it's 
A, getting a lot of attention because it's a big name and it's an American. And then when you look at the percentage of Americans on that very, very short list, that doesn't help either. And so this is what I say in love to our American athletes, to the generations to come. We are the number one team in the world. We are the best team in the world. We walk around with that on our chest as a beacon of honor, as we're so proud of it. We're so we got all the swag in the world. The American team is the hardest team in the world to make. With that being said, we have the responsibility to uphold clean sport and do our part in clean sport. And if the rest of the world can do it, 2,200 people, and there's only 10 people, that's not a, a them issue. That's a us issue. And we got to get that together. Y'all can be mad at me shoot the dagger, shoot the whatever, whatever, but it's not that hard to send and a text like message. Say, and I like to say, just like Tiana said, especially if you're clean, clean, you need to do this because technically you didn't get pop the drugs, but it does put like a thought out there. It's like, why are you missing tests? I you don't have the I'm inconclusive not. evidence that you're not, I don't have that test to show that you're not doing something. It, it so. puts doubt in, it, on your performances when you have whereabouts violations, even if it's like, oh, I just messed up. I forgot to update. Da, 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 da. But off of that, I would like to talk about Tiana Barletta, the yogi. Because let me tell you something. Out here in and yogi poses. Life, I need to learn a pose or two. <laughs> get in with a warrior. Get in the sun salutation. Um, what, how did you start doing yoga? What, like, why is it an important part of your daily life? Um, and then also I just feel like when I, when I see you doing yoga, I'm just like, this girl loves her body. It just feels like a very, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like a very positive mm. experience. Yeah, I think yoga helped me to love my body. I think yeah. um, in a sport like this, when being very in tune with your body is important, we don't always love it because it's um, our body is linked to performance. And sometimes when the performance isn't where we want, we want it to be, our body is to blame or like our nutrition is to blame. And so sometimes we're always looking to change it. But I started yoga as a a counter to my uh, training because I couldn't sleep. I, my central nervous system was always wired. And so it really helped uh, treat that insomnia by switching me into the parasympathetic nervous system so that I could rest and digest and recover. And then I had was blessed with really good teachers who were like, like dropping wisdom uh, during the classes. And I was like, what is this philosophy? I really, this is really resonating with me. This is actually healing me. And so it's just a practice that I decided to keep. So it's both a spiritual practice and it kind of uh, keeps my body super healthy because I can prevent injury because I'm Someone very asked, aware of my body. Yeah. Someone asks, does yoga hurt your sprinting ability with all of that stretching? No, because yoga actually isn't stretching at all. It is the type of yoga that I practice is vinyasa. It is constant dynamic movement. So it's like the equivalent of doing an active dynamic warm up before a workout. So I never stretch my muscles beyond their capability. Occasionally, post practice before bed, I do a yoga called yin yoga, which is very... Um, you hold the poses for a long time, but gravity does its thing and I don't force anything. And that helps me to relax. So both of all of those practices complement my sprinting ability. They don't take away from it. I just want to say, when you come to the Track Girl Summer, I hope you're not coming here for just like a mediocre experience or excellence is just the standard here, okay? I hope y'all caught all those gems that Tiana just dropped, okay? From the beginning of this this live to now, like the gems are just a dropping. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. 
I, I get carried away sometimes. <laughs> Am I embarrassing no. you, Corey? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm looking at the notes, but I'm I'm laughing because I'm like I feel this in my core too. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm still I'm still I'm still over here standing over Tiana's cheekbones, jawline, nose snack. I'm still like. <laughs> Every time I look at the screen, I'm like, wow, Tiana really came out here and was like, is a track girl somewhere? And I appreciate it. Um, but no, I, I think I think that's that's very dope. And I was listening to an interview about with you, and you said something along the line of like you use track for a long time as therapy. Like you worked out a lot of things on the track. And then at some point you had to figure out who you were as like Tiana Barlotta, the human being, aside from Tiana Barlotta, the, the performer. And I would love to hear just like, one, how you came to that realization, like, yo, like, I am more than my accomplishments, my medals, and and how that journey went for you. Because I think we always talk about mental health, and, and I think one of the things I love about our show is that we get to show who people are outside the track, because what you've done on the track is obviously amazing, but like, that's not why you're amazing. The truth is I knew that I was about to be dropped by Nike. Basically. I knew that the contract was going to end and the, um, or the reduction was coming and I had to figure out, I had to find a way to make that not, uh, mean my value as a person was less, which is how I took it every single time every single I got time, yep. or dropped. And um, I knew that because of the fragile state that I was in, having just got divorced and was fighting all that and stuff in court, I knew that if I didn't get my shit together and figure that out before that reduction or like termination came down, it could it could basically kill me. That like that could be the end of Tiana period. And so I did a lot of inner work to try to sever that identity from the contract, like literally from the from track and field, from the performance contract and find out who I was so that I could still be standing after that happened, so that I could still feel like I had a reason to live, like I still had some value on this planet, even though my main sponsor that has sponsored me for 14 out of the 16 years that I've been pro no longer saw that value in me. It was like, it came from an act of desperation to figure that out. And it was urgent for me to do so. That was heavy. That breaks my heart. Uh, yeah. Can I, can I tell you, can I tell you who I see? I see someone who is talented, gifted, beautiful, kind, loving, intelligent, all these things, and it has nothing to do with who you are on the track. I just wanted you to know that for me, like from the depths of my little heart or where my heart should be, because y'all know I'm dead inside. Um, I try to be nice, and then I always I ruin Corey, it. You always ruin it, because <laughs> I was getting ready to say, that's from both of us, not the heart <laughs> part. But I, I just think it's, and I'll say it again, it's one of the things that I think is most honorable about you, because... Again, you can go out there and jump far, run fast, break world records, win gold medals, and people have no idea what is going on inside. And I think, you know, even when you shared like, yeah, I was going through a divorce and I was literally jumping for my life. I, I think that's mm -hmm. basically what you said. I was jumping for my life. No one would have ever known. And I think it's a yeah. true testimony to like, superheroes we go through our things too and you can get through those things but you got to be willing to face the things yeah and take it day by day one step at a time one moment at a time and really just work through it how you can yeah. and I mean I think truly you know when you talk about tying your worth to your contract I, <laughs> we we talked a little bit on our last episode about like this culture about like kids going pro and like just the instant gratitude that everybody's after these days. And it's like, 
don't be in a rush to for that to be your life. Because I think, Corey, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. I've definitely been there where I tied my worth to that contract. I tied my worth to making that team. Now, mm-hmm. imagine five, six, seven years, eight years not making that team and going home and like living with that and then still waking up the next day <laughs> and continuing to go after it. Um, yeah. I, I just think you're a true definition of resilience, but also just the way that you are again, honest, vulnerable, brave, intelligent. <laughs> I just, it, and thank I, you. I want to say something because I feel like you are so vulnerable and open and like on your social media, in your book, like you let people see your scars and see your wounds. And it attaches to something where like, you said you were going through a divorce and you've been through abuse and, and Tasha said, and you would have never known. And I think in society, especially with social media, we put out this highlight reel and people don't know what we've been through. And, I, and I'm like, is it okay? I'm like sitting here thinking like, is it okay that no one knew? Like, is it okay that we sat here and was like, Tiana, so, you know, do you know hear what I'm trying to say? It's like, one, I think, the fact that you're sharing the fact all of your struggles help someone who's struggling because people need to know, like you don't wake up one day and you get a gold medal. And also like, and then I go through things in your story can help save people. And I'm so glad that you share it, but also like, it's not like, I don't, I don't like that society pushes like you should struggle in silence and like, don't let anyone see anything. And I, yeah. Queen of this, like, you'll never know that I am, upset with something um and I just appreciate the fact that you let people into your world and allow them to heal with you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think there's a time and a place right so like Mm -hmm. no I don't I wouldn't want that necessarily to show up when I'm on the starting line about to run lead leg of the four by one but I think that us us existing professionals have done we're, we're better now, but until now have done a really bad job of showing what it takes to do what we do. We really played into the highlight reel. We got everybody thinking it's all gear and free shoes. And, you know, some of us are like super top secret with our workouts. And so we've got a lot of this younger generation thinking we just roll up to track meets and run fast. Um, And I just, I didn't want to do that because this is hard. Each one of those nine medals was hard and, you know, damn near lucky because things have to come together perfectly on that day for, for me to make that team, for me to have that performance. And I just need people to know that the, that luck, as I just used the word, comes from showing up and doing the work every day. And sometimes that work looks like just tying your damn shoes and getting outside and doing the warm up. Sometimes that work is actually killing a workout you didn't think you could kill, but it's showing up over and over. It's not like, it's not all, you know, fancy. And we're not all on, we're not all flying first class. We're not all getting, you know, single rooms at meets. It's a grind. And we have done young people such a disservice to not be more honest about what it actually takes to not only get here, but to stay here. Cause she's been in this thing for 16 years. She said, it took a lot to get my nine medals, nine of them. I think I'm cute with my little one. <laughs> you are, girl. Thing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but I also, I also think it's such like a testament how you said like, it's not just the fact that you do all this work on the track. It's like, you're also dealing with stuff off the track and to put all that together. It's not luck. Like it's not luck. It is you, you are making things happen for yourself. And I'm just, this yes. And we do have roommates at meets. And sometimes it's like, sometimes it's your girl and it's a good time. Sometimes it's a girl who does not speak English and you're like, all right, cool 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 sometimes they'll room you with someone you're competing with the yeah. next day That's times. and i'm like y'all really tried it um but mm-hmm. i get to do what i love or, so i'm not complaining. 
<laughs> but or I'm just like, letting you know. Or the meat director <laughs> only pays for your basic economy ticket to fly to Europe. And so you are actually paying the difference between the basic economy seat and like economy comfort, which might be all the money you had in your bank account with the hopes that you'll arrive to the destination, you know, feeling good enough to mm-hmm. make enough money to cover to that up. ticket yeah. and your rent and your groceries for that next, however long that lasts you. <laughs> yep. Drop them gems. Drop them gems. That's the part of the, the, the game that nobody tells you about that is very real out here in these streets. Very real. <laughs> But we some real ones, so it's all it's all good. <laughs> uh, speaking of real ones, I want to have some fun. We asked this question to the other Tiana, and people have been asking it in the comments. In the chat, right? yeah. We're putting together the all time four by one. Who who are you trying to run with? From I already we'll have keep, the all time. We'll <laughs> I love it here. I'm trying not to wake my kid up, but I love it here. I love it here. I love it here. I love it here. I live. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for coming to Track Girls. What else have you said? We'll be here Monday, Wednesday. Oh, like I'm ending the show. I'm ending the show because what? Why? <laughs> no. <laughs> Excuse me, that about me. Oh. Look, I had to get up. Okay, I got out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Who okay. are we? Well, Is there still an interview? Are we still talking? <laughs> Right. You know what? Here, here's my question. Talk <laughs> about that world record for because people were also also asking about that. Can you just like tell me about that? I saw I saw you posted like you. I think you posted something talking about what you said to Allison before the race. Um, but we'd love to just hear about that story. How you break world records? Gosh darn! My heart. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> So can someone please tell me where my scalp is because she took all my edges. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if people actually know how we put together relay teams, but um, it's a the process right is messy on a good day, <laughs> and so in most championship years, the the team isn't even selected until you know we get to the championship, right? Like that's when we learn who the final team Four hours is. Before race day. Yeah. But in 2012, we, the four of us actually ran together in April at Penn Relays. And so I think that gave us an edge unlike any other Team USA team before that, because we started practicing before Penn Relays. We ran together at Penn Relays. We were already familiar with each other since April, which is unusual for any other team that we had. And so when we all, thank goodness, you know, made the team in the relay pool, we showed up to Monaco like, we do this. <laughs> we've already we've already done this. We've already done this with adrenaline. We already have done this in competition. And so I think it gave us an edge. Like, we weren't just figuring stuff out at the meet, which is our typical Team USA way. So even though our 2016 team was faster on paper, we didn't have that chemistry that our 2012 team had, nor did we have, we had more of a stress-free ride to getting to London. And I think that made the difference. And and honestly, when the, the path to making the team is as smooth as it was in 2012, you are then free to just show up as your highest self, run your ass off, pass the baton, and be done with it. There was not a lot of uh, drama or politics. Bianca Knight was the third leg. 
somebody asked and I just went. I it. just think so. We but had Bianca on. So simple. Why y'all gotta make it so? It can all be so simple. Why y'all gotta make it so hard? It can all be so simple. Don't hit. Don't hit us for copyright. <laughs> But it's it's so crazy because we had Bianca on um, during the Olympics and, you know, Bianca gave us her perspective of like why you guys are the world record team and the chemistry that you all had. Allison didn't feel comfortable giving it to nobody else but Bianca. Bianca broke down how Allison is deceptively fast. Allison doesn't look as fast as she really is coming into her. Jet didn't feel comfortable taking it from anybody else you just kill those blocks and the first leg like but you just broke it down in a way that like I didn't know that y'all ran that same team in April and at Penn Relays I didn't I didn't remember that I didn't think about that but yeah like y'all had that repetition from Penn Relays to Monaco to London Mm -hmm. I will disagree with you a little bit your experience was drama free getting to London, but there was a little bit of, you know, that the, 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 the dead heat matchup, whatever situation. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to let you put that on the relay coach though, because we come on, set me straight. We all, we all understood. And we all signed those athlete agreements, which say in the small print, the coach can name the team out of whoever he wants. So it's not the relay coach's fault that that like like Jenaba assumed she was going to have that spot and that's that literally was the only drama that we had was that either somebody who wasn't directly involved in the process told her that that would be the case only to find out that it wasn't. And so that was that was the drama around the 2012 relay team, but she was just given, I think, bad information. Now, the difference between 2017, and I know you had quite the ride in 2017 yourself, Natasha. We were there together. We were told told directly by the relay coach one thing, Mm -hmm. and then that same relay coach did something very different. different. That's not what happened in 2012, and so that drama did not actually come from our relay coach, mm-hmm. unlike 2017. Yeah. What I love is the Virgo in you read the fine French of the athlete. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Tiana was like, no, 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 you're not going to put that out here. I'm going to set the record straight. I pre- That's why I said okay. you are that's truthful, you are honest. <laughs> okay. Set me straight. Yeah. However, Guys. it was still a very different, like, so, so now, yeah. Corey, Allison, we got to get you on. We got to get your perspective. And Jet, we got to get you on. Because it, it, you just broke it. Like, Bianca broke it down in a way that, like, we got goosebumps. We felt it. We ran the race again in our head. And then you just broke it down. Like, this is logical. You, you hit me with the logic. Yeah. You were like, and it's, it's so funny that you are like, yeah, we ran two times before together. <laughs> and, like, that doesn't seem like a lot, especially when you think about how these college teams run every weekend together but when you when you're doing handoffs one uh, just a few times at while still trying to do your rounds like it makes a difference Mm -hmm. to get those Mm -hmm. two little together Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Um, yeah, it's it's even harder when the team is made up of people who qualified individually because relay coaches are not allowed to make them do relay practice while their individual events are taking place. And so it's like you get to a situation with if everybody's advancing to the final, which three of us did in 2012, we would have actually not had a lot of time to practice those handoffs had we not run together before that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you bring that up. I love Tiana. There are no mistakes. You are supposed to be here because I follow you on Twitter and I know, (laughs) I know that you saw and commented on what went down in Tokyo where the relays are concerned. But I think what you just said puts a lot of things into perspective for people sitting back on their couches, wondering why certain decisions were made. And it's because on team USA, 
the relays are going to come after the individuals. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put who's available out on the track, but we're not going to sacrifice these individual events for the relay. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. I wouldn't want to be the relay coach. I'm not volunteering for that job anytime soon. Ever. <laughs> it, it is It is a tough one. I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but I'll see you know what I'm thinking. I just want to know who was the men's relay coach. I know, but <laughs> not. Well, listen, we're at an hour and 20 minutes. We want to be respectful of your time. If there are any more respectful questions in the chat, drop your questions. We're only going to keep Tiana for a few more minutes. Excellence is the standard. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to all 120 of you guys in here. I haven't had to say sharing like this. Like this is literally <laughs> the bomb.com. Tiana, you have been dropping the gems. You've been amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, people keep saying it's Wallace. I love Wallace. I, saw, I love Wallace too. About what I think about 1054. And I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wallace. Tell us. Tell us. Yeah. I watched the race. It was the most beautiful technical race I have ever seen. I watched it a million times. I watched it in slow motion. I was like, oh, that's what my coaches have been trying to get me to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like I thought that's it what I thought it was mm -hmm. incredible. um what a time to be a sprinter damn <laughs> like literally right from like 100 to the 400 hurdles like yeah track and field is just you, you know Corey and I had our moment we, we kind of got emotional too like we didn't make the team this summer Track Girl Summer came out of this thing where we sat on the couch and critiqued the athletes who were actually there. But it was crazy how, like, 2012, I didn't make the team. I couldn't watch the games. I, I still haven't yeah. watched 2016. I, could, I couldn't watch it, but I was able to watch these games. And I thoroughly, <clears throat> excuse me, enjoyed, like, seeing how Sydney ran 51. Sydney's world record equals my season's best over the flat 400 this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a couple years ago, I'd have been butthurt about that. <laughs> but now mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, track and field is like, it's going to a whole nother level. And it's like, I'd love to be a part of it. She's still probably going to get out there. Um, <laughs> but Ooh. it's exciting. It's exciting to see like the sport just leveling up and especially the women. At Corey. I just want to. I just want to say something, Natasha. I just want to. I want to tell you. Um, I used to feel like that. Like, if I if I couldn't get into a meet that a meet director didn't think I was good enough to get in, I couldn't watch the meet. You know, and I thought I was gonna be like that for the, for these Olympic games. Um, but I'm gonna tell you what my friend Stephanie Bruce told me. She told me hundreds of athletes went to the trials. Three athletes in each event made the team. You're not special. Most of us didn't make the damn team. <laughs> but you think in my mind, I think I'm special. And in my mind, I feel She better like shut the hell up, okay, Sydney Bruce? <laughs> mind your business. You know what I'm saying? Like, in that to me, I was like, yes, that's right. And I can enjoy the role that I have played in this sport without feeling like it was a personal affront on all my my entire career to not have made this team. And I think that's yeah. the place you're in, especially as a mom with way better perspective than before, that you can just like enjoy being part of something so big. Like mm -hmm. you were in a 400, now the 400 is strong. You were part of the ground floor that made that possible. You were part of those four by four legacy sure they're called the dream team this time but you were on a bunch of those teams before and all of that matters listen i wasn't gonna tell y'all but i cried today don't make me cry again okay uh, um <laughs> 
I had a moment today, but I'm going to, one of the things that I'm learning in therapy, and I know that you, you have your experience with therapy too, is to receive the love that others pour onto you. Tiana, I received that. Thank you. Why don't you receive my hugs? People want to know if I'm going to go to Worlds, and the jury is still out on that. And I want to tell you why the jury is still out on that. That's because training yeah. is hard. And every yes. single year, you have to decide if you're going to be willing to do the work that's required to get there. It's not as simple as I'm going to go to practice this week. It's literally like I have to take a bird's eye view and say, do I want to give up alcohol for the next nine months? Do I want to not have anything else on my agenda but, <laughs> but but training and dieting and all the the structure for the next you know x amount of training blocks? And so until I absolutely know that answer, I'm letting myself just be right now. But I will get to a point where I will know that answer. And once if the answer is yes, then I'm all in. And if the answer is no then the answer is no because at the end of the day you have to be willing to do the work and that's mm. what it takes it's not even, it's, you have to be willing to like do i really want to feel booty lock <laughs> do i want do i want to wake up in the middle of the night because i i'm cramping yep like yeah am i trying to get into an yeah. ice bath yeah can i just say i turned <laughs> I turned 35 last month, or I'm sorry, in July. Today's September 1st. Um, mm -hmm. You're 36. I talked a lot about like our collegiate career together or competing against one another team-wise, um, being on several teams together, and everything that you just said. I'm in that same space where it's like, I know what I can do. I love what I do. Um but is it realistic in the sense of like waking up and making that commitment every day, giving up the wine, you know, I, I'm a mom, all of the things, but I get this sense from you and you haven't said it, but it's something that I feel. And I think that it's definitely a part of the journey and a part of finding my worth in that I have a peace and I hope that you have the same peace in that I don't know what tomorrow looks like. I don't know what next summer looks like, but what I know is my journey thus far has shown me that I'll be okay. And my mm -hmm. worth does not lie in whatever that decision is. So in that love on you, which we chatted a little bit before we got on. So it sounds like you're doing a little bit of that now and just embrace the journey. Cause like you've proved ev proven everything <laughs> that you have to need to, you don't, you don't even need to prove anything to anyone anymore to yourself, to the world. Like it truly is a journey for self and how much you want this. And if you want yeah. it at all, and if you don't want it, that's fine too. But I'm really like loving this space that I'm sitting in where I'm able to like, I cried today, cried tears. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, this is good. But like sitting in that space, it's something that like, all I'm just trying to say is from one sister to another that's been in this season, <laughs> tied my worth to this, this game, tied my worth to the, yeah. the, the contracts, the accomplishments, the, this and the, that love on you know that yeah. you're you're an inspiration you've done it all and whether or not you choose to continue to do it you a legend in my book <laughs> you dropped the mic on us tonight okay i love you the same way <laughs> she came over here and she individually pulled out every single follicle of my hair <laughs> And I thank you for it. I honestly thank you for dragging me so hard. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm going to wrap this up because this will be a long show. Before you wrap it up, 
even if you decide not to run anymore, keep writing, keep sharing, keep yeah. being oh, vulnerable. Cool. We need more of that. And that's what I was getting to is Sorry. how do people <laughs> like what does like what can people I mean obviously you're on Instagram, you have your your website, you have your blog, you have merch. I want to get a tea bottle and a tea cup. Link in the description. Um, yeah. Um, you guys know I love craft merch. You can get you can get the book everywhere books books are sold on Amazon. Um, what what else can we do to send you money? That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> to send me money. <laughs> um, the biggest thing right now, I guess, is to yeah, visit uh tianab.com, uh, support the book. Um when I feel moved to write a blog that you you feel aligned with, share, retweet, all of that helps. Um, uh, but honestly, I just I appreciate having opportunities like this to introduce myself to people who haven't yet met me um, and to have impactful conversations and to just be with like minded people who know what it means to be a beauty and a beast and to bring all that together on a daily basis uh, to encourage each other. Um, that's what I try to do across all the socials. And, you know, sometimes you, I'm not motivational all the time. Sometimes I get down, but I'll show you that too. Sometimes I'm petty. I'll show you that too. Um, we like a little but, petty. We like it. <laughs> yeah. But like, even if, if, even if I don't decide to like compete, like I'm really been, thinking a lot about opting out of the rat race which is what I feel like um, like the Diamond League is right now um, they're treating athletes like we need them more than they need us and I don't like that because we're the product we're the talent you know and I don't like that the power has shifted so far that we're not actually benefiting from the system anymore mm -hmm. the workout videos won't stop um, definitely yeah. uh um, gonna I'm not telling you how to live your life, but if you started like a workout program, a yoga program, like people oh, tuning in, that. I Girl. wrote an entire, I wrote an entire homework training book for for my followers during the pandemic called Homework. Mm -hmm. And so I told you how, I asked you how can people send you money. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said I plug all your stuff. <sighs> I thought we were going to put the petty away. I thought we were going to put the petty away, but I do want to know the answer to this question. Did you make that burner account? You know how serious I am when it comes to black women getting, getting to this bag. Oh, yeah. That, that video of you coming out and racing those kids, that's me with my nephew. Y'all know I have beef with my nephew. He thinks he's the fastest in the family, never could be. The way you, I was like, no, she got into this three point stance. And we're not playing. Listen, oh, yes. listen, I love it. listen, I gave them a whole talk for like an hour about the hard work that goes into being fast and like getting medals. And I let them hold the medals. And I'm like, please understand, this is not easy to do. And then, of course, some little kid in the back is like, I bet I could beat you. Like, it happens every time. And so I'm like, all right, little player. Let's go to the playground. I was like, and I'm not about to burn up my whole presentation by letting him beat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, you don't get this. Can I? Okay. And maybe it's because I don't know how to flirt. But when guys are like, oh, let's race. Sir, how do you win in this situation? Because either I'm going to come get you and you're going to get embarrassed because you got beat by a woman. Or you beat me. And like, what did you win from that? Like, you you have I to stop running. Say to, I usually say to them, um, "No, no, I don't race for free." That's what I usually say to to grown men who. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them you don't want these problems. I will embarrass you in front of your whole family. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Me, hats coming off. Um, <laughs> someone said, as pro athletes, you have random people calling you out to race. Yes, every single time someone someone finds out you're on track. Whoa, 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 you wanna it's race. always race. men, though. It's always men. Yes, because 
do do I think some men don't respect what we do? Yes. Sir, I will drag you over these hurdles. Um we need to end this live. I was about I just, to say we have kept Tiana. We've gotten messy. I'm, we've gotten I'm deep. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> we're just like, yeah, let's have all of your time. Um <laughs> But gosh, darn it. Like, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Like, you have been a pleasure and joy and have enlightened us on a lot of different things. Y'all need to get into Tiana Barletta. I'm trying to tell y'all right now. Um, let me pull up the script. I can do this outro. I haven't been it out. We didn't put the outro on because you don't. You added the intro, that's your part, but you don't care about me. Oh, I'm sorry. I normally do add your outro. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> It's fine. I know it. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining Track Girl Summer. Make sure you follow Tiana Barletta at Tiana Barletta on Instagram, IG, uh, TianaB.com to get to her website where you can buy all of her things and send her money. Um, she, she told you Nike wasn't supporting her, so you support her. The actual. Uh, make sure you follow me. At the Cory Monster on all the things. Follow Natasha on the things. And make sure you follow Track Girl Summer on the things. And go to our website. I designed it myself. So if it's trash. Don't so, say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Just and, browse and, and shop. <laughs> and and now you can buy our merch. Get into it. Y'all been asking for it. So go get it. Um, and we'll be back on Friday. We'll be discussing. What will we be discussing on Friday? The Brussels. Brussels. Brussels, we'll be breaking down Brussels, and we were gonna have you guys call in and ask questions today, but we, honestly, we... <laughs> if I'm honest, only you guys can hold a candle to Tiana. Like I ain't trying to hear with y'all if Tiana's in the room. That's not shade. That's honesty. We talk about being honest and vulnerable, today, guys, and that's just how I feel in my heart. But but we will be opening the lines <laughs> on Friday, so get your questions together. And you guys are asking what time? I don't know. I don't know but we'll be here and you'll be here too so it's gonna be <laughs> this is why I need my stuff in uh, the outro in the script because like, when I go off script it gets messy <laughs> Natasha <laughs> but well, uh, be sure to come back same place make sure you're coming to the track of summer YouTube not Natasha's we appreciate it wherever you watch but come here and you know <laughs> whatever time and make sure to remember that no matter what time of the year it is, it's always a track girl summer, baby. Hey. Bye, guys. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Do like. <laughs>